To understand digital signatures, we have to begin with electronic signatures. Let's look at its history. Over 150 years ago, people were using Morse code and the telegraph to electronically accept contracts, believe it or not. Well, obviously, there were some legal challenges. So in 1869, the case of Howley versus Whipple dealt with a message sent by telegraph. The specific issue was, do dots and dashes transmitted across a wire constitute a valid contract offer and acceptance? That was the question before the court. And the court indeed said, yes, it did. So New Hampshire Supreme Court said that it makes no difference whether operator writes with a steel pen an inch long or whether his pen be a copper wire a thousand miles long. In either case, the thought is communicated to the paper by the either use of common ink or more subtle fluid known as electricity. So court validated electronic signature usage. In the 1980s, some companies and even some progressive individuals began using fax machine for high priority or time-sensitive delivery of paper-based documents. Well, the court, in addressing the issues in a few mostly non-commercial cases, have been nearly anonymous in holding fax to signature to be binding. There are some modern examples. If you guys go to grocery store and use this signature pad to sign your signature, well, guess what? You have used electronic signature. Another example, if you have used your ATM machine and punch your four-digit code, that is actually also an electronic signature. What are the laws governing the electronic signature? That is very important because, you know, the reason I'm giving you this bit of a background is because a lot of you think that electronic or digital signature is not legal. And I'm laying out the ground that it is valid and supported by law. So electronic signature law basically says that it doesn't have to be those wet signatures written with a pen. Signature can actually include a sound, a symbol, or a process. A couple key legislation. First one is called Uniform Electronic Transmissions Act, which back in 1995, the state of Utah enacted this law. 46 states and D.C., Puerto Rico, and Virgin Island all adapted this particular law governing the electronic signature. Also, in year 2000, President Clinton signed a law called E-Sign Act, became a federal law. Out of electronic signatures came digital signatures. Digital signatures we're talking about today, it's a subset of electronic signatures. Since it's a subset, all the laws that apply to electronic signatures will also apply to digital signatures. What is the purpose of digital signatures? Basically, digital signatures are used for two main purposes. Number one, we're trying to authenticate a document. We locked the document, which means that after we digitally sign it, no alteration will be allowed. If somebody alters the document, then we'll know about it. Probably the most important feature of digital signature is to lock the document itself. The second purpose is to authenticate the signer of the document. If it says Yong Lee signed it, we just want to make sure that Yong Lee signed the document, not someone else. So those two are the main purposes of digital signature. How do they do it? Digital signatures are created and verified cryptography, which is the branch of applied mathematics. Neither of us are mathematicians, so we're not going to go into this. But basically all it is is that branch of mathematics deals with transforming messages into seemingly unintelligible forms and back again. So encryption, decryption, using a public key or private key. To use the digital signatures, we are going to need something called digital certificate or digital ID. Think of this as an electronic driver license. Somebody has to certify that I'm Yong Lee if I'm living in a digital world because you're not going to see my signature. It's all numbers and bits. So we're going to carry a digital ID. Where do we go get it? Your uncle cannot issue a driver license. Nobody will really take it seriously. The same thing applies here. If OMTI issues a certificate, everybody's going to say, well, who's OMTI? But if somebody says, I got it from VeriSign, then most people will know that's a legitimate, valid, or known third-party certificate authority, or called CA. 
VeriSign is the most well-known, but there are others like Commodore or GoDaddy.com. 